Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gurey. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton Infertility Centre in London. So today we'll, we'll concentrate a bit more on frozen embryo replacement cycles. And we are going to ask this question is, how important is estrogen supplementation in the luteal phase? And that's something which is quite interesting. This was published in 2019 in Human Reproduction. And so when you go back to the basics, is there are multiple protocols on frozen embryo replacement cycles. You can look at it from the natural, modified natural, medicated, downregulated, medicated, and name it, and you've got multiple cycles there. At present, we do not have a consensus of which is the best. And in fact, a meta-analysis suggested that if you, with your protocol you try, success rates are very similar. And what changes is cancellation rates. And there are certain treatments which have a higher cancellation rates, and that's the discussion you should have with your patients. So HRT cycles are generally used because of convenience and because if you're going out somewhere and, or if you want to have a predictable date of embryo transfer and th these protocols are much better. And so, some of the conditions will downregulate it and again that does not influence re results and often that is used in PCOS cases. And in all studies, estrogen and progesterone has been continued for approximately 12 weeks after the uh, the uh, embryos are transferred. So what was this study looking at? And it was looking at, does estrogen tapering affect the outcome of HRT cycles? So from January 2011 to 2018, a retrospective study, HRT cycles with or without down regulation, women less than 40 years of age and endometrium greater than or equal to seven millimeter and a BMI less than 30. So if you look at the, at, the, at the follicular phase, there were multiple protocols. Either gradually increase the estrogen level, which means four milligram, six milligram, and that's how you build it. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to mimic what happens in nature, or you give it constantly six milligram a day. Minimum, they had given 12 days of estrogen. And if you see one of my old talks, we discussed what is the minimum duration of estrogen therapy needed to have a successful result. And the embryo transfer was done on day five after progesterone. If you did an H GNH analog trigger, uh, analog uh, suppression, then you gave the suppression like Zoladex or Gonapeptil or Prostap. And then two weeks later, you, you started the uh, you know, stimulation of the endometrium with estrogen. So what protocol was given in the luteal phase? So in, in addition to progesterone, the study group got a reducing dose of estrogen. And the estrogen was tapered. Four milligram for five days, three milligram for five days, two milligram for five days, and one milligram for five days. In a control group, this was given six milligram a day and continued with progesterone for about two months after the transfer. So th that's the chart of how the protocol took place and that is how it is published in the paper. So when you look at the results, the results were exactly the same and there was no difference whether you gave a lower dose of estrogen in the luteal phase or you kept the same dose of, of uh, estrogen in the luteal phase. Now if you go back to the basics and what do we know, we know that progesterone is critical in creating the implantation window, it is critical in the luteal phase. With estrogen, though we know that its role in the follicular phase is indispensable, in the luteal phase its role is limited. And how do we know that? We know that because there have been histological examinations done which show that at the luteal phase, if there's estrogen depletion, it does not affect the, the development of the endometrium. And in fact, similar estrogen and progesterone receptors are seen in endometrial histology even in women whose ovaries were removed. We also know that if you stop estrogen, pregnancies do occur. And also, estrogen may give you a higher risk of thrombosis. This may be 
that as as time goes by we may be able to decide is what is the lowest dose of estrogen required to elicit a good response to the endometrium the study does have strength and this study does have weaknesses one as a strength it has more than 6000 patients it has it's a retrospective study the endometrial thickness was slightly less in women who were in the study which means where the estrogen was tapered and my question here is that in the luteal phase your endometrium does start getting more compacted and remember there was a paper which looked at when are pregnancy rates better they are better when the endometrium in luteal phase starts compacting but also what we have to realize is that you can reduce you can decrease the estrogen cautiously and i think as most studies come through we'll realize that estrogen therapy in the luteal phase has its limitations equally it has its limitations in a normal ivf cycle and i, I don't see a role in giving estrogen in a normal ivf cycle so again that's a short talk and it's a talk that probably will give us more ideas about how uh, estrogen works on the endometrium especially after ovulation and after recollection and, uh, and, and during the uh, frozen cycle if you do enjoy this talks please share the page and like the page and thank you very much